everybody, and happy holidays. Merry Christmas. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer. Uh, that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Joining me, as always, is Tom. What's up, buddy? Hello, friends. Merry Christmas. Yeah, indeed. And uh, same to you. I hope your holiday will be full of cheer uh, and, and all sorts of things like that. Uh, we're going to be talking about our own personal Christmas wishes that we hope Santa GW brings us for 2023 tonight. That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, what I am going to think about is the fact that I did not realize I'm wearing like an extra vest because it's cold in my basement right now. And I did not think about the fact that when I put this hat on, uh, I get way warmer because my head is not used to actually trapping any heat. There's nothing up there normally <laughs> that that locks any warmth in. And uh, so when I put this hat on, I am now toasty. Anyways, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, whatever you celebrate or whatever you are. Even if you don't celebrate any holidays, well, then I hope you just have a great end of the December. But tonight we're going to talk about all that. But first, of course, the news. Tom, what do you got? Hello, friends. Uh, so it's funny. I'm going to lead with this news because this is news to me. Okay? Sure. And that is, yes, yeah, somebody said, I'm, I'm, I'm broadcasting from the, the void. Uh, the irony is, is that this background looks probably much like it did two weeks ago when I was getting ready to move. The news is, is that I have moved and I'm in my new location and it looks the same. Yeah, you moved so, in like today. So yeah, kudos yeah, to you yeah. for getting your setup back and up for the show. That's, that's the kind of dedication yeah. I expect. My Support. my office is uh, a bunch of empty bookshelves and boxes of books and a desk with uh, my broadcasting stuff because that's the you know that's priorities around here. So, uh, it, absolutely. Look, this is what you got to get going first. Everything else can just be boxes forever. Exactly. You, you got to exactly. have a setup. Yeah. Well, especially that I'm doing it here, and then as well, you know, I'll be on the show next week. Um. Other news, uh, we got a rumor engine. We do. It's a 40k thing. Cool. Next. I mean, it's, like, it's a gun. It's just a straight up gun. <laughs> like, it's so very a 40k thing. Doesn't even have like the Baroque look that you that we could all sit around and pretend no, it's some kind of fantasy no. thing. It's just like the most utilitarian gun. Yep. Uh, and uh, Cygnus asks, functioning internet on the day you move in. Uh, to be very clear. I set that up on Monday. Like yeah. I had functioning internet here, you know, before I ever had the movers drop a box off. So that's definitely what uh, is happening. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I bought a new house about merch money. That's right, folks. That's what you're, uh, you're, uh, yeah, that's what you're voting. Doing. You're voting with the uh, team Tom shirts. That's what that is. I don't think but. the merch money, Tom would get you a doily to put something on in your new house. I don't like, maybe you could get a set of coasters. Yeah. You know, yeah that's probably, just everybody's that's super clear on this. Like the merch thing is not a money source for us. I appreciate everybody's support. It's great. But I keep the prices like ridiculously low. We have like no marginal. Cause I don't want to overcharge everybody. And that's what this place does. I'm looking at a new place for next year with uncle Adam. That is like here in the, has great worldwide shipping and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and then other rumors we have the G uh, we have the GHP previews. We do. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I mean, uh, you know, we don't, we have like this much of the picture out of the whole picture. You know, we're looking through the keyhole as always. Yeah. And so it's like, it's kind of foolish to speculate when we don't know everything, but that being said, we can briefly talk about what was released today because it was news right yeah. uh so we got a rat dude on the cover which is cool i support uh -huh. that that's exciting yeah good stuff what do you think that means N nothing absolutely nothing did the fact that there was a troll on the last one mean anything i mean maybe no it did not what it means is that they that they thought that was a pretty cool piece of artwork. Whoever did the layout and was and thought it fit well underneath that little gold icon they knew they had to use. Yep. And uh, so that's why the little Skaven guy is there. Uh, we know that it's season two. 
Uh, that is true. Uh, it is this, season this, two. Uh, here. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, so here, let's talk about the things we got. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you've got your key to victory. Friendly Galatian champions cannot be picked as the target of attacks made with missile weapons while they're within one inch of any friendly battle line units. Uh, if you, I'm not going to watch, like, there's a whole video. You should watch it. Yep. But that's like... Yep. 10 wound or, or sorry less than 10 wound non-mounted heroes basically that's uh kind of exciting for night hunt <laughs> sure where their entire army is that yeah sure yes yep yep well you're one guy's on a boat i don't know if that counts as his mount or not but he is no, on a boat. he is not mounted it does not have a mount line oh, good okay he just brings his boat with him it's all him yep. he is the boat yeah he's standing on terrain much like all of your your flying uh models ever totally fair uh and then desperate action if you're taking the second turn in the current battle round at the start of your hero phase you can pick one friendly galatian champion on the battlefield to carry out two different heroic actions in that phase instead of one yes also they can't be unique thank you yes that's the other limitation yes no unique so that's the other limitation for the champions um so basically you're generic foot heroes that's who we're talking about that's great and this is our incentive, apparently, now this season to go second in the round, which it is certainly a potent ability. Uh, yeah, some factions will certainly actions. benefit from that more than others. Like I think about things like Fire Slayers, which have a really sweet, you know, heroic action that they can that they can trigger. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, S2D has a lot of foot heroes and like that is a Slaves to Darkness have yep. a lot of foot heroes and they have extra heroic actions and stuff like that. Um, sadly, the hero that would need this the most, that you would want to give this thing to the most, that you would want to actually to be buffed up by these rules. Hmm. Ten print, ten wound demon prince. Welcome back, ten wounder. You continue to be the worst, uh, scroll in that army for all your potential that's been squandered. Okay. Uh, and then I just grabbed the picture of this because then we can just use this. This is a battalion, the Galatian command. Sure. And they talked about how basically the hero could fight or if he's if he is really close to his unit and well, they're within did you uh, want to three talk inches about, of an enemy. Did you want to talk fight. about the new heroic actions? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's I was going to use this to, 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 to springboard okay. that. I was just okay. summing them up, which is okay. the hero fights or the unit fights. Right. Yeah. Um, now. The limitation on the unit fighting is people are within three inches of the bad guy and the unit's within six inches of their Galatian champion, right? Wholly within six. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you got to be like, that's not impossible, but that is a pretty tight amount of space, right? To execute this maneuver. Yeah, but so this is, but this is, uh, these are heroic actions, right? Yeah. They are, although it requires this battalion because the the one that lets you unit fight because it says you're sworn whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't have the text in front of me, but it's they get to fight. Uh, and the only way you become one of those, if you look at the article, is like, well, you you join this battalion, right? Well, no, I you're you're saying uh, the lead by example. I was highlighting just the strike at the opening, which doesn't have that same language. No, it does not. If you just want the hero to fight, the hero just right. fights. That is a new yep. heroic action, right? Right, and that, like that's what I'm saying. We have a generic heroic action that that could let some combat heroes fight at the start. Now that applies for the whole turn, and so when you get to the combat phase, they're going to be swinging last, uh, which is no bueno. But yeah, I mean this. I, this is probably the best version of this kind of an implementation of a thing people don't totally yeah. like, okay. which is, first of all, it's only letting foot heroes swing in combat. These tend to be like the weakest of yeah. yep. potential models that could be fighting in the hero phase. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, there aren't that many non unique foot heroes that I'm genuinely concerned about at all fighting in the hero phase. Sure. Maybe sure. like the uh, the mega boss on foot, the ogre yeah. tyrant. Um, you know, it's 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 a short list. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because foot melee assassin is the least is the second worst thing you can be in the game. Sure. Sure. Uh now the um if you do that and you're going second, because you have to be able to execute both of these heroic actions. Okay. Yep. So that's number one. You gotta be going second in the round. And you'd have to be in this battalion that's up on the screen right now. Yeah. Yep. And the bodyguard unit has to be wholly within six of the champion and within three inches of an enemy. If all of these things are true, then that unit can fight in the hero phase. But then they also get strike last for the rest of that turn. Yep. Yep. So... That's basically uh, never going to get used. Well, I mean, that's that is a heck of a series of sort of things that have to go your way, I suppose, to say it's not like impossible, right? Like, but but how small would that bodyguard unit have to be to be wholly within six of the champ? Uh, you twenty model units could do it. They would just have to be very clumped in a little yeah. ball. Um, but you can fit a lot of dudes within six inches. As as a point of yeah. fact, six inches is quite a lot of space. If you're just like if you're just shoving the models together, the sure. problem is is that then how many of them are actually fighting is like maybe not as many though. They could then pile in off of that. They don't have to be within three at the or six at the end of the pile in, just at the start of the yeah. uh, declaration of the heroic action. But certainly there are plenty of things that could do this that would be you know plenty scary. The the trick is going to be. Choosing in the, um, uh, you know, in your hero phase to do this thing, uh, it's often hard because you have already have to be in combat. So we're, we're talking about some kind of attrition type battle. It's not that it never happens. It's just a lot of fights in AOS tend to be bang. That thing is dead. Yep. Now yep. let's keep going. Like Anthony just said, four fulminators. Anthony, if you charge something with full four fulminators and it rolls all the way through their turn and then back into your turn and that thing is still alive, quit. Quit playing Warhammer because you've you failed. That nothing yeah. should survive that. You know, I'm I'm mixed on this. Uh, I mean, what I'll say is this: I I love the idea that they codified power pairs. Like this is the definition of a power. Yeah, pair. sure, absolutely. Um, it'll be interesting because if this is like prior seasons with battalions, you can only take this battalion once. Okay. So it would be one champ and one uh, bodyguarded unit per army. Because yep. it specifically says down below that it, um, the battalion pairs, one of the core battalions pairs a vet with a single unit of infantry. Mm -hmm. So that's, so it's an interesting, like, so that even if this is, ends up being good, which I don't know that it will be because it's just so rare. Um, it's going to be limited to literally one unit. Sure. Yeah. It's much more constrained, which is good. Yeah. We don't have a bounty hunter situation here, clearly. You know, I've seen a lot of discussion of does this mean that the the uh, battle regiment, just people in the in the comments were talking about, like, does this mean battle regiment will be the thing and we'll all go back to one drop and all that kind of thing? I don't know. I don't know because, again, I haven't seen all the rest of whatever else is in here. So I have no idea what the other incentives are going to be, right? I can only talk about what's on offer here. Not That's the problem. People immediately jump to, like, implications, and we don't know implications, right? I can tell you, based on what I see here, how good or bad I think it is in, in, in examining only this stuff. Right. Yeah. And my answer is sure. Uh, it's fine. Right. It's fine. Yeah. Like, as uh, it is worth noting as, uh, like, uh, as Haiti said that th this may allow LRL to fight with three units. How would that be? I'm trying to figure out what. So, so why? Because when you fight, it's is it when you select a unit? When you fight with a unit, you get to select two, pick two units to activate instead of one. Is that the language? You we'd have, What's we'd have LRL's to look, language. Is that what you're yeah, asking? Yeah, we'd have to look at our LRL's language. But the, uh, there may like 
it may not work because it has to be select. Maybe it might be selecting them to fight, and I don't know that you're technically selecting a unit to fight. You're allowing them to fight. Like, I, like it might it'd be interesting to read the actual um, language. Um, the same with like the soul blight. Is that only when they are selected? Yeah. Again, I'm just spitballing. You need to look at the actual rules, but like some of the units that allow you to pull another unit into combat if they haven't fought yet that phase um, could maybe do that. Uh, well, I am looking up the rules for lightning reactions right now. Uh, no, it would not do that. Is it only in the combat phase? Uh, it's only a, during the combat phase after any Good units mark. with a strike first effect have attacked nope. when it's your turn to pick a friendly Lumineth Realm Lords unit to fight you can pick two eligible Lumineth Realm Lords units you just Lord had to say in the combat, combat phase you just have to say in the combat phase and, and yeah. in addition nope. I'm not done yet this is actually nope. very interesting for them because there are other implications oh yeah okay neither unit can have the strike last effect oh so each of those units can fight one after the other in the order of your choice so this would pull uh, LRL out, uh, pull a unit out of the selection for lightning re reactions if they used either. Correct. If they if they use this, uh, yeah. uh, then you know if they use the the heroic action, then they don't get this. Now, the Galatian command, right? Yep. Yep. This particular thing also does work in the combat phase. Right, so you couldn't have right. used the heroic action here. Now, the one we actually have on screen right. will allow you in the combat phase when you pick the Galatian champion of this battalion to fight for the first time that phase, blah blah blah. Then, yes, they can go, sure, and that's fine. I mean, that's the mm -hmm. battalion ability in the combat phase, like getting a third shot, like okay, cool, yeah. with, with LRL. Right. I mean, Slaves to Darkness do that already all the time, like they can sure. you can easily sure. set up fighting four units before the other person fights in S2D pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just they can't execute on a hero phase fight. So, um, yeah, I mean, lots of the... This has been the new thing we've started writing into heroes anyways. Yep. Um, you know, where the, the crappy foot assassin fights and then the, yep. the regular units get to go. So far, it has not... In the way it's been written into the it books... It hasn't broken the game yet. <laughs> It hasn't barely been a thing. Like, I think the most use of it's out of S2D, and that's with the Lord on Karkadrak pulling in Chaos Knights, because he strikes sure. first and then sure. pulls the other guys into the strike yeah. first effect. So, um, I like a more situational like this. It's fine, good. You know, I'll be interested to see what else is in there. Cool. Like, so yeah, far, I'm, I'm happy. I'm not seeing any bounty hunters. I'm not seeing any... Uh... Uh you know, expert conqueror type of nonsense. Um, but don't worry, that could come. It could come. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, so far, I'm not. So that makes me happy. That's what I want. I don't want nonsense. <laughs> like Agreed. I I would uh I, I would love it if we if we just had like a good old fashioned GHP that was just pretty reasonable and had twelve good battle plans. Like that's all I need. So we talked about last week. That's all I want is just 12 good battle plans. That is it. That's what I require. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that's all the news. Yeah. We certainly made a lot of hay out of that. All right. I mean, it's exciting, right? We're it is. It is very exciting. Uh, I mean, GHB for the year. Um, and I... we may have Bounty Hunter and all that going away. So we know we have three battalions. Um. No, Hades, we didn't talk about it because I don't I don't know enough about it to talk about it. That's the issue. Like I didn't they didn't put up a rules thing for it. Uh Ben Staffordson says best I can offer is four good and three tolerable plans. Hey, I will look, I guess I'll accept that. That'd be still better than our current on offer. Um All right, let's talk about some pick of the week, shall we? Certainly. Tom, what would you like to share with everybody? Oh man. Uh I just I can't stop choosing Ninjon. That's fine. Choose Ninjon. Like I, I talked to John about your love affair with him. It's okay. Okay. He's all right okay. with it. Is he? Is, it, well, does it pass? Um. So I this the video I'm going to spruik this time is he does a walkthrough. This is particularly relevant for me right now. Who um, I have a blank slate for my hobbying area, 
yeah, um, as I'm setting up a new office. And then John has a wonderful video on the ultimate mini painting setup um, where he recommends, uh, you know, uh, mixing things up a little bit and uh, and and setting up and and where to organize things and where to put stuff and priorities and all that. And um, so I'm excitedly um, putting some of that into practice as I am setting up my new space. He's got a good space. Um, obviously, like, I, I mean, I've been in his, his office before or whatever. Yeah. And it, I mean, he didn't know it at the time. I was hiding out under the couch, just of waiting course. to strike. But the dog sniffed me out. You got to watch that. That uh, his, his slobber monster of a dog. Um, but, you know, he just, it's kitchen countertop. Right. Did he right. put around and then installed cabinetry under? And it's a good play. It really is because um, it's a good surface. It's at the right height. Like he has a raised chair. So he's up off the ground. Like, yeah, it's nice. So, anyways. Uh, hey, Prussian Warfare. How you doing? Uh, so, but yeah, that's good. But so his, I will link his, uh, his ultimate hobby space video below. My pick is going to be for the man, the master himself. Uh, Richard Gray, one of my favorite personal painters and uh, personal heroes. He had a new video that I really liked where he was painting a tank. And that's a Death Guard tank. And Death Guard are the only uh, appropriate Nurgle thing that one should ever paint, obviously. But that's not the reason why I'm recommending this for everybody. I'm recommending this for everybody because, one, he does it mostly with the brush, um, which is unusual for vehicles, but he talks through kind of how to make that work in your favor, but also because he kind of screws up and hates what he achieves midway through yeah. and then changes things, yeah. which is, I think an important, everybody thinks that somebody who's a painter at sort of the level that Richard Gray is, or that, you know, any, whatever, whatever level of painter you picture as a good painter, that they just rock up and never make mistakes, right? That it's just like, you just know what you're doing at all points in time. And that's just not the case at all. It's just, the difference between an expert and a novice is the expert knows how to correct the mistakes he makes because he's made them all before enough. Times. They're happy little mistakes. Yeah. So I really liked it. It's a great example of like weathering on vehicles. I agree with Mark. What's up, Mark? How you doing? Hope you're doing well, buddy. Uh, it's a great example of like weathering on the vehicle. And um, yeah, I, I think that uh, it, it's just a good overall video. So linked down in the description. All right. Tom, let's talk about some hobby time. Uh, obviously, you're moving. <laughs> um, by square inch, I'll bet I painted more than you this week. That's probably very true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I I, uh, I, uh, I did some crazy hobbying. Um, I put in uh, about uh, 800 square foot of flooring. Sure. And uh, and I uh, and I painted uh, five rooms that happened. Um, yep. Uh, I I boxed a bunch of models. Uh, I realized just how much Warhammer I have, and uh, I I don't know how I feel about that. I'm I'm coming to terms with uh, with that. Um, having to move all of that like somehow in the last year, it's exploded way beyond what uh i had previously and so uh that's a big deal um and i'm setting up hobby areas so i'm doing lots of of hobby tangential stuff um yeah but uh, yeah. uh as for painting models uh i have most of 120 zombies painted <laughs> that's, that's basically pretty good done. uh that's pretty good for uh the weeks leading into uh um the weeks leading into moving. So um, I have a board to, to start on here uh, coming up in the next uh, week or so. Uh, well, for myself, you definitely buy, by yes, by square footage painted more than me, but that's okay. I'm just saying by square inch, you know. Like, sure, I'll be true either way. Um, I'm getting into this guy right here. Wow. Um, so this Starting is a, a Skaven one. bust. Yeah. Okay which was gifted to me by one Mr. Anthony Polcastro, who is in the chat right now. Uh, crazy horse, so thank you very much. I've been looking forward to having time to just sit down and have some fun with this guy. And obviously he's got, you can see he's got a little warp stone glow down there. So we're gonna do a little video on that and uh, and on just like lighting and using and creating warp stone glow. Um, but yeah, this guy's coming together. He's real fun little dude. 
Uh, like he's a little rat. He's a little rat assassin, and I I love rat assassins. So, rat assassins. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm I'm working on. Um. So, uh, just been just been playing around with him, playing around with some light, and uh, it's it's been a very fun, enjoyable paint. Uh, so, just trying to get that and and a lot, a lot, a lot of work on. Uh, the book for next year, which uh, you and I yeah. will talk about uh, later, uh, <laughs> not on on the air. Uh, so uh, that's my, been my hobby time, and it's been great. Uh, okay, well, Tom, with that, are you ready to? Uh, uh, are you ready to? I may be texting you things right I now. Saw. I'm, I'm looking. Ignore I your phone. It. That's fine. Are you ready to talk about next year and what we want? Our 2023 wish list. What we want to see. Yeah, I'm always ready. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, right on. Uh, let's let's get into some overviews here. Let's let's set up some some criteria. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, Martinez. Yes, we did talk about the new GHB stuff as much as there was there. Um, well, obviously, we don't have the whole picture, so we, we talked about what was in the article. Okay, so here's the criteria. Ready? So first, we're going to talk what do we expect. We have to classify that as either almost certain. Nothing's ever 100%, right? Nothing's 100% in life, okay? Yep. I don't care if they tell me the book is coming out a week from now. Until it's in my hand, it's not certain. Sure, okay? sure. I don't want some ship getting stuck in the Suez Canal or something, screwing up a whole what I think is happening. Yep. Yep. Now, almost certain. Likely, like odds on, or pure wish list. Okay. Like, just, okay. we're hoping for it. We have no basis, or maybe, like, the thinnest of reasons to believe it. But that's where we're at. Okay. Okay. All right, that's 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 what we're going to label on all of these things. We also we're going to talk about what would be best for the game. What would be best? We have to put it in this context. Is it good for the game or best for the game itself? Mm-hmm. How is it best or good for the community? And then what would be the coolest surprise? We're going to kind of tackle some of that at the end. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. There's a lot of categories here. You're really tripping me up. So. I'll try to keep pace. Okay. What do we expect? What's good for the game? What's good for the what's good for the goose? What's good for the gander? That's all you need to remember. Okay? Okay. Yep. All right. That's our criteria. Now, let's get amongst it. We start, of course, with battle tomes. Now, we're gonna break this down by by category of thing. Okay. All right, that's how we're gonna do this. So the roadmap we've already discussed. We know what's coming as far as here, what's sitting on this roadmap, or at least we have real good reason to believe. See these three books, the formal S2D release, Beasts, Gloom Spite. We've seen stuff from those books, right? Slanesh and Corn as the Chaos books, uh, FEC and um, uh, OBR as the Death books, and then two out of the three of KO, Seraphon, and Cities as yep. the two order tomes. Right. Okay. Easy peasy, process of elimination, lemon squeezy. Right? No problems. Yep. Now obviously this roadmap takes us up to 40k tenth edition. Yeah. That's that's the that's the you can't see it, but that's like the end of this map, right? When sure. suddenly the eye of Sauron will focus on 40k and turn away from us right Mm -hmm. so like aragorn leading an army to the black gate you know we little aos will just be tiny hobbits running up the scrabbling up the hills of mount doom uh or up the sides of mount doom to to toss that ring in right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all but forgotten by our dark overlords so uh the question is what comes after that, Tom? I mean, look, we've got basically all the tomes done after this. 
right? Okay. And yeah, but we got a whole year until fourth edition AOS. After this, well, after that last order tome, there is a good solid twelve months at least before we get to fourth edition AOS. Right. Right. Which we're clearly beta testing with these GHBs. Right. Right. We've talked about we've talked before about the Book of Nine Swords nature of this stuff, right? <laughs> Indeed. So what battle tome wise? Now not don't don't go narrative books. I know you want to, but don't. Yeah. <clears throat> okay? Because yeah. we're going to talk about that on a separate slide. All right. Okay. What are the battle tomes after 40k 10th edition? What's what's happening? I mean, the easy one, the easy one is to say whichever one of the three order tomes order, we don't get, yeah. we'll get yeah. that other tome. So Ko Seraphon cities, right? Sure. Fine. Sure. Uh, Teapot. Yeah. I wish that was true. Hold on. I wish that was true that fourth edition would be coming out in 2025, but the usual GW release schedule is every three years. And 3.0 came out in 2021, making 2024 the year of AOS 4th edition. I wish that weren't true. Time is a flat circle, but it is true. Okay. Go. Obviously, order. Sure. Um, I don't think that... You we'll... leaned too far away from your mic. Sorry. Um, I don't think that we are going to see um, too much. Uh, can I be bold? Like, is this what we want or what we think is going to happen? You may classify it as per the previous statement, right? You may make whatever prediction you want and classify it accordingly. I mean, I think that my, my prediction, my hope, is that they're bold and they go with something completely new. Okay. Okay. That's not what's going to happen because with the release of, um, like from a production schedule standpoint, there's no way that they're going to be able to allocate that much resources, right? To, to, to putting out a new line when, when they're likely chasing the new next 40k big box that they're releasing, right? Whatever sure. The I mean, like, boxes. yeah, yeah. The 40k thing is going to be a major thing that will suck up a lot of oxygen in the room, right? We know that we've been yes. through the launches of these. So before. they're not going to do something new, but that was my hope, right? Like mm -hmm. my dream would be that they that they now they've updated most of the books, um, that they swing big. Okay. Here's what's going to happen. That's I'm ready. Take me That's through it. What is likely going to happen is that we will see, if we're lucky, one of the uh, the other death books, right? Because sure. We have I mean, like, like Soul Blight still would be lacking a three book, which would be the official right. last tome, and and they were right. they were last out of the gate uh, in two point One would assume that they'll continue that journey. So, if we're lucky, we'll get um, we'll get that that last death book. The realist in me tells me we're not going to get any more books. So you think like, okay, let's say, so the back half of the year battle tome wise, you're saying realistic answer, we get Soul Blight and whichever one of the order ones we didn't get on this roadmap. No, that's, that's like a timidly hopeful. The realistic, the realist in me says we get nothing. Wow. Okay. I think that's too harsh. I think we'll get, for me... I would put odds on that we'll get those last two. So here's my invitation to you. Okay. Go look at 40K release year. Yeah. What AOS books came in the latter half of that year? Uh, the 40K release year was 2020. If you're talking about 9th uh, sure. edition. Yeah. No, and like, that's fair. not a, and that's I wouldn't fair. use 2020 that's as a baseline a for everything, for anything. Sure. But 2017 before that, right? Uh, yeah, 2017 was eighth edition. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I think I think the same could be said of 2017. Is go look go look at what release looked like, and and I think you would be surprised. I think we had almost no fall releases, no book releases 
Well, like, there's a difference between almost none and two. Sure. Right? I hear that. I I do. I hear that. I do. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll we we can I like I'm literally looking right now on my other screen over here. Uh late 2017. Uh you are correct in that in late 2017 we actually had zero. Because the last thing released in 2017 was was Quadrant Overlords, which came out in the first half of the year before 40k, and then we didn't get any tomes until the first Nurgle tome in 2018. And then in 2020, we obviously had the same story, but there's potential exception there because it was 2020 and all the release schedules were food. Well, 2020 did have stuff in it, I will say, even in, during the the that year, even during the great year of, of pestilence. Um, it did have stuff at the end of the year. It had two books at the end of the year. So, and obviously, like, again, using his... So, two thoughts to that. Two two issues. Here's one. Yeah. Yeah. One, using any kind of history of what GW has done to predict the future is like the turkey predicting that his day is going to be great when he wakes up on sure. Thanksgiving, right? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. So, that's number one. Yeah. Number two is GW in 2017 also wasn't anything like GW now as far as production capacity. Uh, both like in desire, goal, efficacy, yeah. and capability. Like they've literally built buildings and laid power grid into their building since then. Sure. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. Like, a lot of yeah, things yeah. have changed. Now I understand yeah. the books are printed not there and blah 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 but they've they've also up ramped a lot of staff and so on and so forth right they just are a different company overall as far as what their capabilities are so i i have to believe we get at least those two books is my honest answer to me the question is really do we do get really those think... two books okay that's fine okay i mean it's fine the question is what are the odds we get a new army within this calendar no. year? There's no way. You're putting it at... Well, look. Okay. We're going to have... The city's release will happen sometime this year. Do you think it'll be this year? Or do you think it'll be next... next uh, this year being 2023, right? Okay. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, when they set that up, they basically said it was 2023. Okay. Because okay. they said it was like a 12-month preview. And it would follow the same thing Sisters did. Okay. So we will get cities this year and, or at least I would, I would, I would mark that as almost certain. Okay. Okay. In my mind. Yep. Now the nature of that release we know is going to be a ton of new figs, right? Yeah. Yep. So, we already know that there's going to be a major, 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 I don't know what to call it, refresh, launch, model yeah. launch, whatever. I mean, it'll basically be a new army. Yeah, and that won't happen in the summer. So if, because it's not It could, it could all lead, it could happen pre the, the yeah, launch. That's entirely possible. But, the, but this 40K launch will drop like in June, because that's what normally happens, like late June. Uh, July, they want it to be in that, they want it to be uh, in the, the second half of the year for financial yeah. reporting. Yeah. Okay, so let me revise and then say if we do have a city's launch, it ends up being um, September, October. Okay. And it is going to align with a new narrative campaign. Okay. The Dawnbringer Crusade. Sure. I think... And then what... And, and, and do, you want me to, do you want me to really lean into this? Yeah, go for it, man. Do as you will. It's it's going to be a drip campaign of 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 cities where we won't get the full kit and caboodle at the beginning. It may be a drip campaign of like the narrative books, like a la Lumineth, leading sure. into the full release. Like that would be the other possibility. Okay. All right, I'm going to take a different swing. Here's here's my okay. money. Okay. Okay. Yep. My money is that summer book is cities. And let me tell you why I think that. 
fascinating. Because I think cities is has been done for a while. Maybe that maybe all the rules aren't exactly finished, but all the models have been done for a while. The book is probably off at the printers or about to go there or something like that. Um, or into translation or all whatever whatever crazy steps sure. they have. Right? Yeah, who who knows what their production schedule looks like. Yeah, yeah. And I think the city stuff will all come in June. I think it'll be a and, and here's why I think so. Wow. Tell me more. I and, and I don't have any like there's no benevolent reasons behind this. Here's I have a very simple reasoning behind this. Okay. They want to get it all out before uh forty K comes? Yeah. They want and they want to supercharge their financial year in their mind. And and so they're going to drop this around the same time as the 40K launch? Yes, because they don't think there's much overlap between the two purchasing bases. The, there's probably not. Right. So it's a reasonable thing right. that over the summer, when the most people have the most time to play their games and are hence the most inclined to yep. purchase things, okay, yep. other, than, other than the Christmas season, that's your only other okay. time that you yep. you have higher sales, right? They're like, let's just supercharge both of our, both of our, uh, user bases. And they're going to use cities to try to basically supercharge Q2 and 40K to supercharge Q3. Financial reporting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the problem is if they put out cities in like August or September, it's going to end up going to the same quarterly books as yep. 40k will and they don't want them actually on top of each other well but if they but if they do june it's going to be in the prior fiscal year no their fiscal year is not it doesn't go in the half oh it starts in may oh interesting okay okay well then if that's true uh i would agree with anthony Polcastro in the comments who suggests that we'll get a preview at Adepticon. Yeah. I mean, I, that's going to be your canary in the coal mine, right? Like, right. I mean, right. Right. that's how you know for sure. Absolutely. Uh, but that that would be my guess, because I think we're talking major relaunch here, just from everything we see in the articles, right? I mean, we're just, like, every human kit has to be dead in the water. Those are all gone. Yeah. Like, every yeah. old kit in cities is dead. Those are all gone. You're talking about a complete I mean, refresh. But do we even think like of the a big one? Probably with new kits added. By the way, they're not just gonna. They're just gonna. It's not just gonna be like here's the new handgunners. Here's the new crossbow guys. That is not no. what this is gonna be. No, no. This is gonna be here's the new gun troops that are like calling back to the previous gun troops or something. Yes. Right. Well, we here's the new super Ray heavy armored yeah. warriors or or. Yeah. Uh, dwarven stalwarts that are you know with the that defend the cities and like here's your new iron breaker stalwarts or something like I don't know you know I don't just make it up words I'm just throwing together random mortal realm sounding words right yeah. like here's your random mercenary ogre unit like I don't know you could go anywhere right but but it'll be huge and. Uh, I, I really think that'll be, that's that book right there pre 10th edition because I mean, maybe, maybe I, because I, 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 I don't agree with that, you. that logic. Yeah. Because I agree with you that the back half of the year for us is just going to be two books. I don't think we're getting any new armies this year beyond that. Like after the 10th, you know, yeah. we're going to, I think we're going to get two books and then that is it. That's where like, we're like, no, nope, well, you're good. And we could we could very feasibly, if we have a narrative campaign, which I'm sure you're going to do this in the slides, and we you know, and it slips into the leading into the new edition, fourth edition, um, we could very very much very possibly could get a new book, like a new army leading in. That's happened many many times before. Sure. Uh, like oftentimes when we get new armies, it's either at launch or in the releases leading right up to launch. Sure. Um, and and those new books have been designed with the new edition in mind. Like that's that's often what we're looking at. Um, Dennis so, says they will keep the range for old world. I don't know what you mean by that, Dennis. You mean they'll keep the existing model lines around? Yeah, I doubt it because they'll want to 
they'll want to like when whenever first of all it's two separate studios to be super clear it's two separate studios that don't talk to each other or care what the other studio is doing <laughs> all right that's number one like they don't that's not interacting. Those are those are like separate companies for all intents and purposes. And the Forge World Studio, the specialist studio, Forge World Studio, who's doing Old World, they're gonna want to make all their own stuff for Old World. Like they'll they're not gonna be like, hey, can we borrow? They're not gonna beggar the AOS kits. No, no, no. They're gonna have all their own stuff. No, what you're what you'll get with the AOS kits is you'll get occasionally. Uh, a made-to-order wave of plastics and of 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 like old kits, like they occasionally do with heroes, or they'll do you know with like Space Marine chapters, or you know like sculpts, right? Mm -hmm. Where they'll do a run of stuff. You may see that you know in an homage, a lead up to Old World. They may release sure. like they may do a one week, two week window of buying high elves, right? Like yep. that could be very possible. Sure. But that said, uh, like if folks think that your Phoenix Guard are surviving into the new edition, into the new city, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know what's gonna, I, Good I, luck. I do not think that they will go. I mean, I've been very strong on this, and I stand behind it. I do not believe that the new city's book will be only humans. I think they will continue. No, the, I agree with that. But, but I think they will but, retire some stuff. Sure, of course. No, and I think what I think we're not gonna what we will likely not see moving forward is racial specific units. That would surprise me. What I would expect is that we will have in the kits a mix of elf, dwarf, and human per in in each unit. That would not surprise me. That'd All be dressed in this in a similar uniform, right? Yeah. But there being like dwarves elves and humans in a regiment together i suspect that's where we're going and to that end i would be very surprised if we maintain racial identity or if we do it'll be one to two it'll be like power pair type of kits and sure. so for example like i could see them keeping phoenixes and phoenix guard and then you get an anointed on foot out of that same bundle so you get two kits three or what four no, technically five, six units out of those two kits, right? So you can still have a little bit of elven flavor that's dedicated, but in general, it will not be that. Just like I wouldn't be surprised if we did, if we got like a dwarf unit and a dwarf hero, and that's it. And that's yeah. basically the end of end of that. So the, but you know, so that's that's cities as whatever it is, right? Right. And I, I do think it'll be a big release. Like they didn't, they're not going to do 12 months of articles leading up to it of designing for this thing and then release like three kits. Right. 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 I mean, that's just common sense. Like they're making a big deal of it because they want to make a big deal of it. Yep. Yep. Okay. By the way, it'll launch with one of those gift boxes. I'm gonna put my finger down. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna... Oh, of course, of course. Uh, you know what I mean, like the, the sisters, new, Black the Templar, Slayers, the S2D. Book, four kits. Yeah, and yep. uh, the book's not available for the, uh, the next two months legally in match play. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, now the question is: Is are we gonna be able to do that army for Holy Wars yes. in the fall or Holy Havoc in the fall? I guess we'll see. Okay, but now Tom, we have another important question here. Oh. Okay, which is uh, what is we're we're gonna do some lightning round calls on on single hero, couple kits, full refresh. All right, okay. on all yep. the other tomes. You ready? Yep. All right, yep. here we go. We've kind of seen stuff for these two already, so we're, we'll we'll skip beasts and, and gloom spite. All right, let's assume the order tome here. Is Seraphon, for just argument's sake, okay? Because okay. I do think it. My my money still that Seraphon is the more likely one. Because I don't think they've I don't think they've figured out what they want to do with Ko yet. They don't have to crack that nut, and that's why we gotta wait so long for them. Uh, I disagree. I think that I think that I think Ko or what's coming, and I okay. don't think that we'll run it I with both. Okay. If it's Seraphon, what are we getting? Single hero. Uh, uh, couple uh, kits. Refresh. 
a couple kits, and it would be the replacement of all the Saurus. The Saurus and the Croxifer. Okay. Um, and then they keep all the skinks. Because of the of the kits, the skinks hold up the most. Yep. Um, and what they would do if I were them is do like they keep the Carnosaur, but they replace Temple Guard and which Temple Guard aren't terrible, but uh maybe they keep Temple Guard, but they do new Saurus Warriors and New Saurus something, right? Like yep. um they create a new unit and they replace an old unit and they call it. Yeah, for me, and I then, think if it's the calf. yeah, yeah, if it's Seraphon, I think it's somewhere above a couple kits and somewhere below a line refresh. Call it like slightly, like a small, like a partial a refresh. refresh. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, like more than three, but less than seven. I guess would be somewhere in that range is where I'd put my money. You know, if I was trying to like sure Price is Right uh, range it out, that's where I would say. So like. Four to six, I guess, is what I yep. just said. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's assume this now. If it's KO, what's the th- what is it? It's a hero. Uh, it's what it you is. Know what? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and say this. Okay. I think it's a terrain piece. Sure. The dock. We're finally getting the dock. No, so there was like a lighthouse that was in the lore um, that rumors had actually placed it in uh, potentially the KO stuff that got cut in the last book. Mm -hmm. Um, And it would not surprise me if something like that was, uh, because that would be an easy kit. They don't have a lot of holes in their line. um, And they have a lot of foot heroes. And so uh, that sure. would be that would be one way that they could accomplish Well, and as that. we all know, when you have a bunch of foot heroes, they don't just make you another foot hero that's basically the same as the other foot heroes you already like fire have. slayers. Yeah. Or ogres or sure. And sure. Yeah. It would, it would like, shape them. Which what I wish will. it would be would be yeah, somebody just said the Zombeck lighthouse. Um yeah, the Zombeck lighthouse there it is. I wish it would be a melee unit. That would be nice. But uh No, they have two melee units. They're just bad. <laughs> a real melee unit. Yes. Um, but come on, man. It's a it's a it's there just you a go. hero. A logisticator. Oh nice. Nice. I like that. Alright, let's go next. Corn. What's corn getting? Let's assume this cast book is corn. Uh a hero. You think that's it? That's it? Nothing else for corn? Nope. Okay. Okay. Nope. Because they functionally, with AOS 1, you know, six years ago, they functionally had a line refresh with all of their mortal stuff. Sure. Um, and their demon stuff still holds up. Um, they just need good war scrolls. Like, if they updated the Blood Throne or whatever, I think it'd be great. I agree. It's a single hero. Like, it's absolutely a single hero for corn. Yes. Uh, let's assume the next one's Slanesh. What are we talking about there? A single hero. Uh, yeah, one would hope for Corn. It is a Valkyrie, by the way. That would be the correct choice. Yes. Uh, whoever, yes. yes. Thank Indeed. you. A Valkyrie would be a great update. Upgrade. Uh, for Slanesh, it's going to be some single dumb foot hero. It'll probably be bad. Yeah. Um, but we'll be like, like absolutely gorgeous. It'll have booby tassels and it'll be great. Yeah. Like it will be an absolute killer model that looks amazing. That will be bad in the game because it's the yep. That's the that's what we do. Yep. Okay, let's assume this death tome is flesh eater quartz. What are they getting? Mm. Hmm. Uh. Well, we know they're getting a aberrant ghoul king on throne as a collector. Well, the, yeah, I mean that guy exists. Yes. <laughs> um. You know, I. I wouldn't be surprised if we got a new unit. Okay. What's the new unit? Like um, a new unit box. Um, And I would see it as something in between. um, Like this is going to sound really weird. But I could see them putting like ghouls on the backs, like riding the other bigger things. Okay. And leaning into the night theme. Like, 
sure. mounted bar Actually have bolts. knights, as it were, like yeah. dudes riding other dudes. Right, dudes riding other dudes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I could see something like that, which would be weird, but um, otherwise it's just a foot hero, <laughs> right? Sure. Because because that line, honestly, like it could be, uh, nope, never mind. I take it back. I got what it is. Okay. It is a foot hero, uh, but he b- builds multiple ways into all the courtiers. Okay. Or maybe it's multiple foot heroes, like. Because right now you have to build those out of the boxes, so that's the proud nail in that line. I had to think through it. So you're going to get a ghoul courtier, and then you're going to get a Vargolf, uh, Varg, whatever the, whatever the big, the horror, the crypt horrors, and the and the flappies uh, courtiers for them. The, but the the latter two could be a dual kit of a hero building one of the two ways. Yeah, they say there's a rumor floating around, and as somebody mentioned yep. in the chat, and I was going to mention it here, that they're getting some kind of new foot hero and some kind of like melee ranged mixed heavy ghoul kit, basically. Interesting. Okay, um, I can see that too. That all I want is the Lady of Blood, like the or the Lady of Meat, or something like that, like whatever it is. I want I want the Lady of the Lake analog, that's just yeah. like some horrible like bog hag. Uh, that they think is the Lady of the Lake. Like, that's... Come I mean, on. how amazing would that be? It's such a win. <laughs> she hands it's out such bones a win. rather than swords. Yeah. Yeah, she's just handing yeah. out bones. Sticks. Yep. No, Duralius. This is the Zephyr Blade. Uh, Tom doesn't like that. Make fun of him. Okay, so if you know what it is. Here we go. Uh, cool. All right. Let's assume the next one is OBR. What's OBR getting? It's just so uninspiring. Sure. Uh, a, foot, a foot hero. And the Dame of rules. the Charnel Pit, by the way. I love that. Or the Sanguine yeah. Lady. These are these are good yeah. names. These are yeah. all solid. Yeah, indeed. Uh, uh, a foot hero and good rules. Yeah, yeah it's, exactly. It's a foot hero and be happy with it. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, yeah. I mean, I think, I think if we get Seraphon, I think it's primed to be the big refresh. And then we know cities is going to be like tons of kits, and and that's yeah. going to be the year of the of the like big expansions we get. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, what would people, people really want? Skeletal archers, though. I understand. I understand. Uh, I would also uh, accept a giant uh, ballista. Um, because they they have those in the in the lore as well. They use those when they're defending their. Uh, I their I would taken, take a chariot. Uh, sure. Like a bone chariot. They yeah. I don't know if in the story they I don't remember if they ever have talk about using chariots, but they 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 use a lot of war machines in the uh, both archers and war machines in the the lore that they don't uh, actually have represented as kits for for whatever that's worth. Um, which is usually not much, but it does right. exist. Uh, okay, last question we got to answer on this slide, Tom. Here we go. Right. What would be the cool surprise? Okay. Kel surprise. What is, what is the thing that would happen this year with battle tomes that would that would blow your skirt up and be like, wow, okay, I did not expect that. Um, let's go with the fifth Lumineth book. Dear God. Um. No. Uh. Let's go with. Um, a bunch of supplemental. No, that's that's me. That's cynicism right there. Um, no, let's go with. Uh, uh, I want to do a line refresh for flesh ear corpse, whole line. Okay. Like, if you want to talk about what what would blow my skirt up, that would be for them to really double down because, like, 
what happened was, if you'll remember, is that Flesh Eater Courts got broken off from Old Death, right? And then they made up all of this lore regarding like the knightly orders and the chivalry, chivalry like sure. chivalry, like haha, Bretonians, blah blah blah. Nah, nah, nah. So what needs to happen is they do a full line refresh and lean in, just sure. hard lean in with all their kits of like knights and regalia and all that stuff, and just and and put it in the models, which it's just not there. Okay. Like okay. other than like the uh, the throne. Uh, you know, like other than a handful of the newer stuff that like that presents this way, I would love if they just leaned in. All right, here would be the cool surprise for me. Yeah, we've got this theoretical line refresh coming with uh, cities, and yep. the cities as they are in the lore exist at least somewhat precariously. Sure. Right. Um, but we are in the middle of these Dawnbringer Crusades with people going out and settling the wilderness and all of that, right? And in the stories, they often hire mercenary forces to help protect the cities and to protect the Crusades and things like that. You want our, our first gold faction? Well, we've been talking about gold factions now for seven years. Nothing. Yeah, we have. We have. Nothing. I mean, kind of. We kind of got gold factions with giants. I, kind of, um, but you're not. You're not wrong. You're 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 giants. you're in the space where I'm at. You're almost in my. You're almost in sure. my bouncy castle. Sure. Okay, let sure. me open the door and invite you into this bouncy castle with me. I want the new Dogs of War, but not. It's not actually called Dogs of War. This would this would be the cool surprise for me. If we have cities and we have this Dawnbringer Crusade push, yeah. Right? then mercenaries could be a big part of that. There could be mercenary units in the city's book. Yep. Like they could be part some new models that are literally mercenary protectors of the cities. Like they're, they're just there on yeah. the payroll. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so if we have some number of them, then you could release some number more, which is kind of how the original Dogs of War went, by the way. Yeah. You had like yeah. some number of kind of existing mercenary type things and then the dogs of war were like here's other races mercenaries here's astronaut the dragon lord which and we, Long we had that. Sire pirates and so if on. you'll remember like we had that with um with the the uh general handbook sure like 27 we did but this would be a different this isn't a take you're you're it's flipped around you're still going the wrong way you're assuming these things are put into other people's armies i'm not I'm assuming this harvests some portion of the mercenary forces from Dawnbringer Crusades and says, you know, these are already a panoply of races, right? Here's the other, here are individualistic forces, and these all fight under a mercenary banner for anyone around the realms as a coherent force. Okay. Okay. So you have effectively like battle tome mercenaries. Fun no, functionally underworld war bands. But yeah, only like uh bigger than that because they're actual units not not necessarily just three dudes and a guy but no, yes but like some underworld's war bands are like six dudes and a hero i'm talking about a unit this is like this is the so for example sure some would just be heroes and could be very much like underworld's things yes by the way that could just be an underworld season that's going at the same time sure um but i mean like Here's your guys. They come in 10 for 110 points and they yeah. have, you yeah. know, I don't know, laser guns, whatever. Right. Who cares? Yeah. Right. But yeah. their point being is that they're like, they're nominally order. They're nominally sure. an order faction. Sure. Uh, But they can also under certain that, like, I guess I am pitching a gold faction. Cause yeah, they could fight under, under certain sure. things. Yeah. All right, Party Benson, he says, I'm not following here. Let me explain. Let's assume in New Dawnbringer City's book, you have some number of kits that are mercenary-ish. Yeah. Okay, that's step one, I'm assuming. Step two is then we release a battle tome called Battle Tome Mercenaries. And, or oh. something like that. It's not actually going to be called yeah. Battle Tome Mercenaries. It's going to be called like Battle Tome some... No, you game. know what it's going to be ca ca uh, called? Is it's going to be called... Um, 
uh, Broken Realms mercenaries. You know, like it's going to be some narrative thing that'll that'll inject mercenaries into. And in this tome, you have factions that are all willing to fight for the cities or for order or for whatever for money. Ultimately, they work for the highest bidder. And you have representatives of the different armies in here. Not just the other, like you have the whole order portion jacked in. They can recruit any of those. But then you also have new kits for them. Okay, you got like five, six new kits as well. One of which is like a death group. Here's yeah. your death hero and your reinforceable death people. Yeah. Right? And they're just mercenary death people that have broken away from Nagash and they fight for coin. Like some rogue necromancer and his special brand of, of sure. poison zombies or something. I don't know. Whatever. Right? Uh, pirate zombies? Uh, why not? Yes. Okay. And and on and on. Right? Mm -hmm. And And you've got this mix of different races and peoples, both from the good guys and the bad guys, whatever whatever that means, right? And they, but they all fight under the banner of like their battle tome is battle tome. We kill people for money. As a group, coherently, that's what we're all about, right? But so, can they be included in other armies no. as allies? No, no, we don't so mess around with that. Only so this whole battle tome is the entire gold battle tome, and they only ally with each other. In the narrative, sure, they go fight for other forces all the time. They don't fight with them, right? Like right. cities hires them, daughters hire them, people, chaos hires them. Everybody hires them in the world, but they don't right. mix their forces, okay? They use them for like whatever they're not currently using their army for. Sure. Right? Sure. We don't need to so suddenly you're not open up the world these. to broken rules for, for you're this. You're not going like... to mix these with other units. It's no. just simply, a, it is a force of mercenaries that like narratively they're fighting for other faction, but the composition internally is a bunch of things that are all coming in this book. And so you could basically balance it. Yeah, correct. Okay. Just drawn together of, yes, Cygnus said battle tome monetized murderers. Perfect. Sure. Right. I, I am not literally describing fire slayers and KO because fire slayers and KO are a unified race. KO are ultra capitalists. They do, work for money but they follow the code and the code is very restrictive and has other things they have to do fire slayers are quite mercenary and do work for chaos and other forces but they are a unified people no this is not that i mean okay. no functionally what if you're if you're trying to like pin down what he's describing he's describing cities of sigmar where you I'm have describing a bunch of dogs mini... of war from fifth edition no, it, warhammer fantasy battles no where it, i could have a unit of lizard men Fighting next to Asenil the Dragon Lord, a high elf on a dragon, next to Baraggio the Besieger, a human dude with a giant mace who also brought a cannon with him, and then he's got some human dudes with crossbows and big shields next to him. Okay? And it's right. a united Benetton of, of, of peoples from across the realms whose unifying factor is that they don't care about, there's no creed. The Fire Slayers are all about, they're mercenary, but that's not their number one goal. Their goal isn't go make money. Their goal is go find the pieces of Grungi and put him back together. They uh -huh. have a mission. Yes. Yeah. Okay. These dudes yeah. don't. There's no principles. Their principle is we'll, ca we'll kill for money. <laughs> right? Sure. That's it. Right. But I'm saying that you have a bunch of like races within a single book that's yeah. all working together for a unified purpose, their purpose being money. That's Cities of Sigmar. Like you have elves and dwarves and humans and all of them, they're coming well, together. Well, I'm, ta I'm talking this, a bigger tent party. You would, yes. Of course. Of this, you'd have orcs and goblins and necromancers and yada, 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 yada. That's what you're saying. And they're all just punching people for money. Sure. Yeah. That would That's be the fun. cool thing for me. And you know, the funny thing is, is they really wouldn't have to release uh, new kits. Um, it could be the first book that they ever release. Here you go. It'd be the first book that they ever release where... Everything are foot heroes. All of them are foot heroes that are just unit like unit champs for sure. other units. So like you buy this champ, right? And then you have like a box of like iron iron drakes or whatever. And he's your champ for this, but you use the normal iron drakes for your foot heroes, foot foot soldiers. 
Totally. And by the, the way, Robert Snyder, be... I am not talking about Order Grand Alliance Battletoad because in case I can't impress this enough, there would be orcs in here. There would be like a smart goblin who's out on the on the prowl. There'd be a Skaven unit in here that's like some smart claw lord who took some boys and is like, enough of this. We're not doing this anymore. Let's go over to those guys and hang out and just get paid to kill people. Like, why mm-hmm. kill each other? Like, some members of each race, especially of the other non-order races, have to be smart enough to figure out that humans are willing to pay them to kill their enemies. Yes. They can get mm-hmm. all the murder they want and get paid for it. It's like a win-win if you're a bad guy. Okay? And uh, if you are interested in win-wins and being a bad guy, I would encourage you to like and subscribe our video at this point. Mm-hmm. At any rate. There we go. I can see for the like, if you played Warhammer Fantasy Battles in the '90s, then you know what I'm talking about with Dogs of, of War. But it's just that. Just look up Dogs of War if you don't know what I'm talking about. That's all. Yes. Yep. It's, it was wild, and super cool. One of my favorite battle tomes they ever did. I don't know if they'd ever a, do anything like that again. I want a I mixed would. skeletal unit of like orcs and dwarf yeah. skeletons. Uh, the cursed that. company. You know, was that the cursed yeah. company? Yeah, I think cursed so. company. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. So, there we go. That would be my cool surprise. Um, I, again, I see... I, I'm putting the odds of such a thing at somewhere near 0%, but it'd be amazing. Sure. That would blow sure. my skirt up. Like, I would be in on that force so hard. A bunch of people would. Because you could pull stuff from yeah. from Underworlds yep. as well, like crazy. Yeah, it would be the perfect modeling situ- opportunity. Yes. Uh, okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Dennis, yes. Exactly. The Cursed Company of Richter Kruger the Damned. Perfect. All right. Narrative books. Yep. That's happening. Sure. All right. Let's talk the narrative. So here we go. I've got the Thondia picture up here. I assume we're going to get the next one, right? We're going to get another sure. season? Yeah. Season uh, like, of War. This GHB is still in Thondia, seemingly, because we're still talking yep. about or er, yep. Galatians. But, stuff, that's but we'll likely get a new season of war come the fall um, with a new region. Okay. So are we? So we stay in. Obviously, we figured out now that this whole edition is clearly just going to be in Gur. So right. fine. Right, like okay. that's where we live now. But we're going to a new, a new continent. Okay. Well, like well, uh, Cygnus, I'm just going to jump in here. You say you want to play another realm. Guess what? We're going to. Uh, we're it's probably, called the launch of 4.0. 4.0 is going to be in shadow. Like we're going to go Ulgu finally in 4.0. I'm calling it. I think that's what's going to happen. Then we'll get Skaven in the launch box, and then we'll get Malarian soon after. Well, that's 2024 prediction, but I think if you were going to do, like, I hope it's Skaven. That would be perfect. The other potential is that that's when they would do, because it's going to swing back to chaos. The other potential is that that's when they chose to introduce Chorfs. No, no, that won't be a court. It'll be Skaven. It'll be a complete new Skaven read. That's what I'm calling it. it. Because it fits with both the need of the line, and it also fits with uh the the narrative because you could technically if malarian is an order faction which he very likely could be he could sure. be your it could be malarian verse uh rats because rats are pushing into olgu and he's like nope clean them out and that's oh, we finally get a non stormcast starter uh, i suppose it's possible maybe i mean maybe and then you end up getting a remake of island of blood with sure. the uh with the yeah, with yeah. elves versus, versus uh, rat and... yeah, yeah. Anything's better. As long as we don't get another 5th edition, we're good. Uh, okay. So, uh, what do we want from this narrative book? I think we both agree, almost certainly, so like almost certainty, we're getting a new narrative book, a new season of war, sometime this year. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. That one feels like right up there at the top extreme high percentage but this will happen you know barring some weird shit i hope the series like broken realms was honestly i okay. i really enjoy the advancement the narrative advancement we get with broken realm style releases 
I, I do as well, but I think they'll save that for the first six months of 2024 because they'll be done with all the battle tomes. Well, but I think that that'll that'll be at the end of the at the end of the launch, like at the end of the like, just like we got Marathi at the end of the uh, of the prior year, like we got Marathi in like that November time frame. Yep. Um, I think that we could see that at the end of next year. Okay. Is the be so like is, book is one wind up. of whatever that happens. So maybe like yes. the season of war kind of sets that up, and then yep. we move into that to a narrative arc to end out the edition. Yeah, things I want to see. You know what that is? Um, I want to see a bo- uh, terrain box again. Give but this me time more... just a terrain box, not a stupid incarnate in there? Uh, yeah. And if they want to take another bite at incarnates, they can uh, in uh, Ulgu when we get an incarnate of Ulgu next the following year. What, are, what odds are you placing on a... Uh, on another on another incarnate in this calendar year. Uh, hi. Yeah, I, I agree. It feels like an almost certainty to me we're going to be getting saddled with another one of these idiots. It'll be like an incarnate of rage or something. Sure. Uh, but like, I would be very happy if we, like, fine, another incarnate, great, okay, cool. Just yeah. make him bad, and I'm okay with it. And, by the way, he should be available separately. <laughs> like, here is the box. You can buy the incarnate. He's like a model. He comes in a box, like models do. <laughs> you know, how you buy stuff. Yep. Okay? Yep. And then, over here, yeah, yep. is Board a big terrain box terrain meant for right. the season. Perfect. Great. Buy the one you want. And there you go. Yeah. And I'm okay if they include like the bat season of war book in that, that thing, honestly, like it, it reduces the buying power of it. Right. Um, but I, I think that that, you know, let me say it this way. I think what it needs to be is this. Okay. They, they need to do the box and terrain and board. They need to do the model. They need to do the book, and then they need to do a limited edition release of all three. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what needs to happen. And the limited re- edition release, all that will be bundled together, and the book will be some special cover. Sure. So you you buy in at the level you want. That's what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Like that would be that's the, the nicest s- thing. That's that would be ideally if they wanted to capture the most amount of the market. That's what they would do. Okay. The next question is, what do we want from this narrative book? And and I have one answer, which is I want it to be allegedly like this Arcs of Omen thing for 40K is supposed to be. And somebody mentioned this in the chat already. Um, the discussion around the Arcs of Omen is that it's complete narrative thing. It's, it's a narrative thing. Like, if you're into it, get into it. It's going to tell a story. It's going to let you play games that are that kind of thing. Yep, yep. And if you're not, don't. Yep. Yep. And then I, that's and, it. Yep. And we're, we're following the offspring of model of keeping them separated. Uh, yep. Which is, that sounds great. That sounds amazing. Let's do that. I don't want to have to work. Like, if the incarnate had come out as a narrative only thing, I wouldn't care. I'd be like, great. That's just fun. Fun times for everybody. Yep. The problem is when we tried to shove any of that crap into match play rules. Yep. Right? And keeping it off separate so people can use it. Like, I played through Thondia. I thought it was fun. Like, me and a buddy played through it over a course of a couple weeks. We had a good time. It was great. I was very happy with it. It was a very fun game. I would like that again. Give me another fun narrative campaign to go through. Right? And give me, yes, Mike is correct. I want cool narrative battle plans, right? That are fun for the narrative that that is being told in this story. Yes, please. Wonderful. Just don't make me learn five new things in an already complicated, or, you know, 50 new things or whatever in an already complicated world where I also have a new GHB potentially at that same time, i.e. middle of the year. Right? Yep. Um... And, and I want it to just be an arc that feels like it's taking me through whatever is happening in the story. I would also love it 
if the narrative had some kind of finger pointing at consequences in the world. At some way, the world was changing. Doesn't have to be the biggest thing, but it has to be something. Yeah. Right? Yep. Some force realigning, a new leader taking over an army, some city being founded or destroyed or, you know what I mean? Something like that. Right? Yeah. Uh, like move the story in some way through this narrative. And then I get to experience and play through that. You know, it could be as simple as, and by the way, it doesn't always have to be like good guy cities falling. I would point out that like that Catacros taking uh, the fortress that he did, you know, one of the fortresses of the eight points, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right. Was it was a really cool narrative thing. Yeah, it was. And it was. so, that kind of thing is what I'm talking about. Like, the world changed. Death has a foothold in the A points. Yeah. Right? So, real actual consequences for the world that changes the footing and the narrative as we know it would be cool. Especially if, as you said, it then pointed towards the sort of end of uh, edition arc we were going to have. Right. Yeah. Right. If it directly provoked, if it was sort of the inciting incident at the end of it yep. for whatever the end of edition arc is, thumbs up. Now we're really cooking uh, with, with gas here. Right. Yep. I'm okay. in. Yep. Anything else we want from a narrative book? Anything else narrative book oriented? Uh <sighs> No incarnate. <laughs> what would be so? So here's the question: We got to answer on every slide. You no, ready? let me let me just say this. No, Go. no, it's not that no incarnate. Just put the incarnate in the narrative only rules. Sure. Yeah. As we said. Yes. Yep. Okay. Ready, Tom, for the yep. question. Yep. The question is, what's the cool surprise? What's the cool? Narrative book surprise. Uh, that we would get, um, uh, robust alternative narrative play rules in the broken realms and that they would be supported in a meaningful way by the community. Do you mean like an ongoing campaign system? You mean something different than path to glory? What do you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean a campaign system, uh, such that, so think about path to glory, but with maybe as well, a Mac, like I'm thinking more firestorm mask. Okay. Um, but robust and interesting and that, and supported in such a way that it's actually being utilized by events or events that there's an event structure around it where that GI GW is just like they have taken an active hand in promoting match play events and competitive events, um, that they would do something similar narratively. Okay. I see a lot of votes in the comments for the Anvil of Apotheosis. Totally sure. get that. Sure. Uh, I know that was very popular for, especially amongst narrative folks, and I agree. I like the Anvil. I think it's fine. I think it was overtly probably complicated, but I think you could take a second bite at that apple and get somewhere as a narrative only rule. That's cool. Yep. Uh, here would be my big surprise. Okay. Yep. My big surprise would be. The cool thing I want to see is I want to see the leader of one of the factions killed and a new leader rise and that new kit to be released along with whatever the first book in the, in the, in the narrative arc cycle is. Yeah. Okay. They can die in that book or not. And I don't care who it is, by the way, I'm willing to throw up anybody into the chipper shredder. All right. Okay. Okay. But some nominal leader actually dies, dead, 
dead, dead. Not, not dead for five seconds like Teclis destroys Nagash, but Nagash just reincorporates back home, right? Yep. I mean, dead, dead. Now, the problem with this, and I know, is that a lot of the leaders of these factions are near godlike beings that are very hard to disperse, okay? And also yep. that have a model attached to them. That's okay. We blew up Anvil Guard, a whole city that had rules attached to it, and we said, you can still play Anvil Guard. If you do, you're playing partisan forces or, you know, whatever. Yeah? Yep. Yep. Or you're playing before the fall of Anvil Guard. Yep. That's what your army represents. Okay? Yeah. Same thing here. Let's just pick a random hero. Okay. I realize this is off center and it's, it was killing me slightly. Uh, Teclas, Teclas bites it. He's dead now. Okay, sure. he's just he's just sure. dead now. He's just dead now. Yep. And so that lets us. Up. So first of all, maybe the replacement doesn't like the replacement in the long term is Tyrion, right, or whatever. But then he has some lieutenant that steps up, and it's a new kit for LRO. Or whatever. And and that's what I'm saying. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean... With all these figures, it doesn't matter. You can eventually bring them back. I'm not saying forever and ever and ever. They have to stay dead. Right? Everybody comes back. No one's ever really truly gone. Right? In, right. in a magical world. Right. But have somebody bite it. Uh... And make it real. Make it impactful to that army. And then have somebody come up. And then leave that. And then wait three years, an edition or so. And bring them back. They're back. Hey, they reincarnated. They came back again. A new hero, a new version, a new Like something. Hilario. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Right? But, but like, that would be a cool surprise for me. Right? Of, of actually seeing, like, the head of one of these factions killed. Right. Yeah. Uh, sure. Former like Arpy. Archeon bites it and Bellacor takes over. Sure. Oh. Sure. Yeah. I'll sure. throw anyone into the chipper shredder. Like I said, I don't care because they don't have to be gone forever. Like it's fine. You can still play Archeon. No one's stopping you from playing Archeon. Just in the story, currently he's dead. Yep. If we can kill Superman in the comics and Captain America and everybody else, they've been around a lot longer than these idiots. Yeah. Okay. And they don't stay dead forever. So fine. Uh, they'll eventually get brought back, but it'll be interesting to explore the consequences in the world of that person falling. Yeah. Like death of insert character here, having wide ranging consequences on their faction and the world would be an interesting thing to explore. Totally. Poor so. Marathi. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Gareth says, Stormcast generals rise up and revolt against the Celestine Prime for spending too much time fighting for other armies and stab him in the back. Yeah, exactly. That dude's <laughs> never in a Stormcast army. He only hangs out with other people. Too cool for school, that guy. All right. Anything else on narrative? I think we're good. No, I think it's good. Uh, yes, Manny says the Iron Jaws guy can die perma. His kit still builds the normal guy on a cabbage. Yeah, sure. Or you could just have a new dude. Yeah. Fine. Okay. All right. Events. Uh, events, Tom. Events in 2023. Well, I mean, I kind of... That's funny. Uh, I didn't change the text what, here accidentally. <laughs> I kind of hinted at what I wanted to see, right? Like I want to see us get um, more more commitment towards narrative events. Okay. Um, like and, the big thing they did at the uh, yeah, U.S. Open and, Finals or whatever for 40K? yeah, and they yeah yeah that's exactly right. Um, but really, have a plan and execute that plan is what I want to see. Okay. That's exciting to me. So I want to see, so I'm going to break this up because I've got a lot of 
a lot of thoughts on this one. Okay. I hope that this first year was kind of the test year for the U.S. Open events, right? Yep. And I think, you know, I, I mean, I know Mike well enough. That is, he's like, I've spent time talking to the guy. He's a real smart guy. I think he's doing a good job creating these events and leading this. Yeah. And things I would like to see for events. Gareth, you're actually not wrong at all. I was going to go there. Number one would be, I'd like to see an actual event pack from GW. Not like a step above match play rules. These are for tournaments. Tournament event pack for running a GT. Some kind of like scoring and stuff like that. Not compulsory. Like they use it at their events. Right? Mm -hmm. But it's not compulsory. It's not like it's a thing. TOs can still do whatever they want. But they have a published available pack that is a starter pack for people who want to run two-day tournaments to use. That they can just pick up and have stable, tested scoring, secondaries, all of that. Sure. Right? Just like, hey, new TO who wants to run a two-day, here's the the official thing. You can use this as you want. You can change things if you want. Do whatever you want. You're still in charge. But... But here's a foundation for you to work from. Sure. Right? Yep. I'd love to see the kind of U.S. Open style events expand. I hope they go to more places, more countries, more locations. Yep. And I would love to see them, love to see them have some kind of way of creating feeders for LGS events. Or smaller events or other events. Yep. Where they can work with other other events and say, hey, when you at this local store, you win this thing or at this two day GT or whatever, we're gonna supply you with a for lack of a better term, I'll use what they used last year, right? Yep. Um like we'll supply you with one golden ticket that you can choose to give out however you want. Yeah. Okay. Or but but you know, give it to Probably whoever wins like best general or best overall or something would be the recommendation. And that person gets to go to like gets a ticket to go to some kind of big finals event and pass that around. Right? Sure. And we build a really big event. Right. I don't know if I'm accidentally suggesting PTQs into the PT circuit or whatever, right? That's not my goal. Sure. Uh maybe it's more like states back in the day. But uh, but something like that, I think, would be cool as for events. And no, I, I think if that. you had that kind of resources where a TO could say, here's a stable battle pack I can use. I think if they had some kind of application for resources where you could also then, which they already do, but like making it a little more formal where you could actually get terrain and stuff from them to help mm-hmm. run events. You know, obviously Tyler's taking a big uh, push into this as well with having, you know, pre-made tables that he can ship around the country to people, right? Yep. And and really just built up that scene. And then as you said, I completely agree as well. Expanding out narrative events. Like ride narrative events alongside the tourney events. Because the, the challenging part is it's usually hard for a narrative event to, to sort of carry its own weight, I guess. Yep. To get enough people there to just be doing that. Yep. But narrative events that are happening alongside other events, I think, are very stable and and, and have been, you know, well attended. Right. So you just give people that other option. That's what I'd love to see. Yeah. I think it'd be good. Right? I mean, is there, is there anything I'm missing there? What's 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 the other event thing that wouldn't no, I be mean, I think that you hit there? you hit all the high points, right? Is there a cool surprise that we could see with events? Yeah, um, like a full integration with the community, like a global campaign with uh, some type of active like event chain engagement. Love it, narrative. love it. It would tie back yeah. to the previous thing almost, right? The the yeah. the narrative. But yes, like a true global event to decide some future 
yep. activity in, in, the, in the realms. Sure. Yep. That's okay. the bonus, I think. I think that would be the cool surprise. I agree. I agree. That'd be fun. Okay. Good. I think that's good. All right. Warcry. Well, of course, we're going to talk a little about Warcry here, Tom. We can't not discuss Warcry at all. Okay. Sure. So for Warcry, we know we've got the quarterly box sets coming. Yep. Right? The second box set was cool. We know we're going to get new ones. We got at least two more coming that have been on the roadmap. So, Tom, what do the next boxes, what do the next quarterly boxes contain? We know the next one has some kind of blood theme, but what do they contain? Uh, a board, some terrain. Some models, terrain, yeah. Uh, no, what are the factions, band. Tom? One warband that's corn oriented. Uh huh. Like they're a blood drinking corn faction. Mm hmm. And the other one is a decorated in bones. Um, so one is harvesting blood and organs, and the other is harvesting bones, and both are fighting over corpses. Now, I'll tell you what I want. I mean, sure. I want the corn versus Soulblight Gravelord's vampire box. Sure. Okay. Sure. Like, I want the battle over blood. Like, it's not... Yeah. They can't equitably divide up the body. No, no, no. I And when I was saying what I was describing, I'm suggesting... I'm not suggesting that they're equitably dividing up, but they're fighting over corpses specifically for their own purposes. Sure. Uh, well, there is both a, um, Gabor, there is both an FEC icon on the map and a Soulblight Gravelords icon on the map. Um, in fact, I think there were yep. two that were potentially Soulblight. Um, but yeah, man, I want to see a blood versus blood match. Like just all the blood. Who's the real master of blood? And I understand that that's leaving out the Daughters of Cain who also have a blood obsession. Yeah, okay. Yep. Uh... But, man, tell me vampires, like some kind of vampire-themed soul blight versus corn Warcry Warband wouldn't be incredible, right? Mm -hmm. That sounds awesome. Just lunatic blood worshippers going at it. That that's, that's an amazing box. Okay. What about our next box after that, Tom? Who do we want to see in this, in this fight? Who deserves the build-out opportunity that Warcry provides, right? Because that's ultimately what Warcry does, is it gives you a chance to sneak a new unit into your army. That's what the Rottmeyer Creed did, right? Snuck this new valuable unit into Nurgle. And same with the teeny weenies, weenchers, the little the little skinker dudes, okay? Yep, the new chameleon unit. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, clearly, it has to be a KO unit. Okay. Sure. Um, I mean, this could be a chance to sneak in the melee KO unit because they're not flying Warcry big giant boats not, in this woods. Right. Right. And so the answer is, is uh, they're on 40 mil bases and they're little mini mech suits. They're augmented combat suits. I, well, it's a, since it's Warcry, we can do mixed bases. Well, okay. You can mix bases, sure. And they're like a st little, like, they're stormtrooper. They're like, they're sky storm troopers. Okay. Like I want eight. Here, here's my, here's my, here's my shock KO. Troops. Shock yeah. troop, sure. Okay. Here's my, here's my, it's going to be in bases of eight. So eight, 16, 24. Sure. Because theoretically these can go battle line in the KO army in the updated book. Sure. Okay. Why not? You got, uh, you got a leader guy. Yep. And four, no and the, you got a leader guy on like a thirty-two. You got four normal dudes on twenty-eights, and you got three mech suit dudes on forties. Yep. That's your unit. Okay. Yep. And the four normal guys are 
like a little bit of range and a little bit of fighty. Okay, so, so like they're arco, like they're arco. They're in sort of, jumpsuit. yeah, but they're and they're like, like heavily armored. Utility belts. Sure. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Uh, you got a leader dude who's like a swashbuckly type of guy. He's he's boldly going in here to get some treasure. Okay. See, I thought I thought you were gonna go with um like a mixed force where like you have an engineer that's fixing these mech suits. Sure. The, the, that dude's a, also an engineer. He's just he's just a swashbuckling engineer. A swashbuckling engineer that's fixing the mech suits. And they're more, which are more melee oriented. And then you have the other lighter, smaller guys that are providing like support fire for the mech, the, the mech, the mech melee. Folks. It's all close range because you're in tight jungles, right? And then you got yeah. three mech suit dudes who yeah. are pure melee, clampy hands kind of thing. Yeah. And saws like, like buzz yeah. saws. Yeah, saws and clampy hands. Yes. Yeah, totally. There you go. Boom. Done. That's that. That's a unit. That would be awesome. Who else needs a unit? Who are they fighting in this imaginary box that we're just crafting completely from from whole cloth? Uh, clearly, it has to be a. Um, uh, it has to be a just the most primal uh, of Warcry warbands because it's going to be like tech versus savagery. Okay. Uh, and so it has to be like a cultist group, right? Like, because we've almost always done some type of like chaos cultist. Like that's the hard. Doesn't have to be, but sure. Could we, we could always go all of the box. All of the boxes have been that though. Right. But again, the past doesn't predict the future. Sure. (laughs) Robert Snyder said, wait, are we doing avatar? I mean, accidentally. So it seems, yeah. Yeah, basically. Yep, and so we're gonna do blue. Sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, beasts. Like, yeah, like beasts, CW beasts just said, it and it's beasts. Yes. That's the answer. Yes, that is the right answer. Like beasts of chaos. Uh huh. Like an awesome new beasts unit. They could again be somewhat mixed, right? Of some yep. kind of uh, yep. savage gore, right? And that would be fantastic. Like give. Give us a new range of models for those guys who need it desperately. Yep. And uh, that sounds like a super fun box set right there. Yeah. Savage uh, Beasts versus, you know, KO Guns and Tech. Classic. Classic. All right. What other ranges would we hope see some new models over the course of the year? Because I assume we're just going to get, I assume we're just going to get these quarterly boxes ad nauseum. Uh, I think that we have to see some FEC stuff. Okay. Like, it's just going to have to happen. Uh, I don't know. You got me, man. Okay. Here's, uh, I'll, I'll give you my, I'll give you the other ones that I would very yep. much want to see. Okay. Okay. This is how we get the Skaven, uh, Eshin forces refreshed without needing a whole model line refresh. Like this is the vanguard to that, because you just put make them a Warcry warband, like a complete Warcry no, warband instead of the no. Underworlds warband. I'm I'm gonna go the other direction. I think you're wrong here. Okay. I hear Eshin. I understand where your heart's at, but that's but you are you are thinking about this completely wrong, friend. I'm ready. This is. You're the refresh of your clan, your clan molder, because this is Gur, the realm of beasts, and so this is your mixed big rat, your rat herds, your all of that just fits into the realm of beasts, and you can have mixed base sizes, right, for like little taskmasters whipping like. Uh, giant rats and stuff like that forward and you have mutations like this is like this stuff that that's that it writes itself for for reinventing molder i first of all completely agree with you i i rescind my previous statement and have now come down completely on your side i am with you 100 percent 
Let me also answer a comment. Jeff Grunsko said, the past doesn't predict the future, but you're adamant the 10th edition 40K is coming in 23 and AOS 4 in 2024 as if set in stone. Yes, I am. Because the models in a box set are non-predictive of anything. There's no business outcome tied to that. Okay? Edition changes, which are their biggest money moments and things that like very high up... If you're the executive board in that company... You absolutely know when they're doing addition changes and you absolutely have a say in it and care a lot because you look at the bottom line and can see the difference of what happens when you change an addition and you watch your sales go like that. So yep. yeah, as soon as somebody sees sales go like that, they're going to be like, I want one of those every year, period. You go figure out how to make this happen every year. I don't care what you do. Just, I better see this yeah. done. Yeah. Like that's how business outcomes are decided. And so and right, right now it's but been like whether AOS. chaos is in a book or is in a box or not, nobody at a high nobody cares. Yeah. So for product lines, it's been AOS, 40k, and then other, which has right. been like Kill Team, War Cry, stuff like that in year um in year three, in that off year. Mm -hmm. We could very likely see old world filter into one of those others. Um as as is uh like continuing to see the cycle that we have of like war cry kill team etc yeah now again the as with any edition release or anything it's true nothing is absolutely certain in this world they could always just decide they could get to a point where they see enough diminishing returns on edition changes that they're like okay this isn't working anymore let's slow it down and change up our model somehow they they do that as well right yeah. But my point is the difference between like a business level decision and a, hey, what's the fun thing to put in a box level decision? Now, yep. you're absolutely right on the Mulder thing. That would be amazing. And as William Matthews pointed out in the comments, the Mulder pit is in Andor, uh, and, and Tor, southeast of uh, Thondia and Galay, um, which should be the 2023 24 season. So there's your even your season, which is an and Andor. And, Man. and Tor. Fantastic. Yeah, because that would give us... I mean, Rat Ogres are good lord. The picture in the book is so comical of that. And right? let me point out, we do have a Skaven on the new GHB. I, sure. Again, I don't think that means anything, but sure. Okay. It's, it's heralding what's to come. Just like the other one heralded that we're getting a new Gloom Spite book coming in. Is this. that what it did? Yeah, because that that season wrapped up and we get a Gloom Spite book. This season's going to wrap up and, and we're going to we get don't Skaven. get a Skaven book. No, but we're going to get Skaven to show up in and and Tor. in work right. Yeah, they're completely yeah. unrelated. That is boy, that is some magical thinking right there. Okay. Uh is there anybody else you'd want to see in a box set, in, in, a, in a Warcry box set? Like any other force that would be the super cool thing or somebody who needs or could really use another unit? Uh, I'll, I'll give you an easy one because I, I do have one more. Okay. And that's Fire Slayers. Expand that range. Oh, my God. With a oh new and God. interesting unit. Oof. Don't tease me like that. <laughs> but right? That, yeah. That's yeah. the answer. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, like they need something and that would fit like a glove. Yeah. Like because like an FEC Fire Slayer would be a fun one. Yeah, there's a hundred reasons why the Fire Slayers may be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Very good. Surprises. Or this is the, this is the final slide. This is the kind of, you know, catch all. So, surprises. What else? What other things? What other wild swings? What else would we want? Uh, I've got the first one. I'll say it here. I've been waiting the whole show. Here it is. Uh, where is my standardized starter, casual, I don't care what name we put on it, battle pack? Where can I have that now, please? That's what I would want. I want the stable battle pack that we've talked about in previous shows that jettisons battle tactics and all of that stuff and simplifies the game down. Yes. For those people who've commented, I, yes, I am aware of the thing in the core rules that is still too complicated. It still has too much junk that doesn't need to be there. I'm talking about the simplified play experience, AOS 
We covered this in a previous show where we discussed a starter battle pack or a casual battle pack or whatever. I don't I don't want to like I don't want that I don't want the name to be the thing we get hung up on, right? But where's that? That's what I want. I want it gives to me. So, there's one. What else you got? Um, I want the new. Uh, I want a new game. Okay. All right. <laughs> that is Necromunda for AOS. That had a name, Tom. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. I've given up. I've given up naming things like that. Sure. Um, because it never happens. Um, and so, I mean, you don't think we'll get more time when when we get Old World in twenty twenty four? We will, but I don't. I I don't want more time. It won't be more time in that sense. Well, I mean, maybe it will be. I don't know. It's set around no, the same like, time as more time. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like current setting. Old World is set at around the same time as more time. It wouldn't surprise me if they do a launch, coordinate the launch between those two. Like that's the natural outworking there of old yeah, sure. world is to do is to actually do like a full forge world release of more time. Sure, I get that. That's not what I'm asking about. Okay. Like I don't want a forge world specialist games more time. That's not okay. what I want. Okay. I want. I mean, we assume that will happen with the launch of the old world. Being as I as I stated. Sure. I'm pretty sure their current time setting for the old world is like 500 years pre the destruction of the world, which would be about the same time as more time was happening. I think if memory yes. serves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. We're right in that, right in the same wheelhouse. And I love more time and I would look forward to that. And I would love to play that. Okay. okay. That's not what I want. Okay. I want to come back over here to AOS. And I want to explore a shade spire. I want to explore, I don't know, some other corner of the AOS world with narrative rules or like with rules that are going to be Necromunda-ish. Got it. So you're talking about a very focused type of tight experience. That's what you're like. You're, you're, you are using the Mordheim esque trope, but like the whole point of Mordheim was it was largely set in this one setting. Obviously later expansions took it to other places like the jungles sure. of Lustria and so on, sure. blah, 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 blah. But yeah conceptually we're setting it in this one place i don't know i mean war cry is already doing that pretty well i don't i hate the war cry play experience i hate it wow like i i don't want that i don't want the five term play experience okay um okay. i like i i love the open-ended character of the mordheim game i love the two by two foot tables of mordheim Okay. Like, I don't want to go back to, or not two by two, a four by four that, that we would play more time on, mm -hmm. right? Like, I want the bigger board. I don't want the tight turn-based, like, I want the semi, I want the game that could literally, like, start and then just end because of bad die rolls, you know? Sure. And then there's a resolution the now of narratively where we go from here because no one won, Right. Or the giant woke up, right? And we all just decided to bounce and not stay and fight. Sure. Like, Do you, I, that would be a surprise. I mean, I have to wonder about the feasibility of such a game in the in the current world. Yeah, and I I, I don't know, but what I'm saying is is that like if you want what I my, like my my gem of what I want, sure. I want that type of play experience, you know, uh, dialed into the AOS like world i got you okay yeah and, i think and like in that sense like noob says that war cry is less dudes and more clean modern game cool that's not what i want like and i don't care if there's the minutia of rules like necromunda has i'm okay with that i'm okay with some of that. that's what i would say okay yeah i mean that would surprise me. I I won't like you're, you're, what you're talking about is obviously the inclusion of a lot of more RPG inf inf infused gameplay. Yeah, right? yeah. And and I do think there's a world there worth exploring. Obviously. Well, um, let's not forget that back in like 2017, they decided to 
to to swerve left on this or swerve right and lean into this. Like if you'll remember the second cursed or the second Warhammer Quest box they released was Hammerhall, Shadows uh, over Hammerhall. Yeah. Which required a DM. Yeah, sure. Like like if like the, it was truly back into the narrative, like a more of a narrative D and D RPG style. Yep. Like it's it wasn't this automated thing. Like it was it was community storytelling, and so um, and a more time like play experience is not even that far, right? Yeah, you're saying it's you don't still- care. Like you're not looking to recreate the exact thing. But that kind of experience is with with RPG infused elements, something like that. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And like again, I can go play more time, and that's fine. But that's also not in the AOS world. That's in the old world. I understand. I get you. Okay. I'll tell you what would I mean? It would super surprise me if we if we did get a completely new force in this year. That would just be like I think it'd be neat. But sure. man, it would shock the heck out of me. Like I just yeah. don't yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I would. It would completely blow my mind if they were like, also here's Malarian's forces, which they won't do because that'll be for Ulgu or whatever. But or here's Chorfs, yeah. or here's Kurnathi, or here's you know any of the fifty million things we've talked about yeah. that are that are floating around in the in the ether of of potential armies. Like that would truly shock the living bejesus yeah. out of me. Yep, agreed. Um, yeah, I think that's probably most of the big stuff. All right, cool. Tom, anything else you want to close out on? Well, I'm excited to see what the new year holds. Yeah, I, I am very excited. The little bit of the preview of, that we got of the GHB has me pretty, pretty hopeful. Uh, you know, as we mentioned in some previous shows, I do think we're sitting on the precipice of the most balanced the game has ever been. Well, at the same time, often being the most engaging, the battle tomes are that have been coming out are solid. They're engaging, interesting. You know, feel like they're appropriate to the army. And I think that the only thing holding us back has been the anchor of a kind of underwhelming, frankly bad GHB. So if we get that rocking and rolling, uh, I really feel like this could be a pretty bold new world for. Uh, for AOS, where where 2023 is just feels like the best year the yeah. the game has ever had, right? Yeah. Uh, you throw that casual starter battle pack on there, and we're just we're really we're we're straight to the moon. Uh, so that's where I'm living. Okay, but where are you out there living? Uh, what didn't we include? What would surprise you? What are you hoping for in 2023? And where do you think it falls? Almost certain, you know, are you wish listing? what it is? Drop it down in the comments. Tell us what's going on. Hey, by the way, if you stuck around till now, thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate it. One more request. Next week to close out the year, we're going to do a little Q and a little questions, a little pseudo ask me anything. So if you've got questions, the whole team's going to be here. So it'll be Tom, Tyler, and I. And we're going to end the year on an Ask Us Anything. We answer your hobby-related questions or, or Warhammer-related questions. Mm-hmm. You should try to keep those the questions to that. Although, if you want to know other stuff, that's fine too. So drop your questions down in the comments. I'll be harvesting some comments from here. Uh, I'll also be... My Twitter is down there. I'll also be asking on Twitter. Uh, I'll also be asking uh, my patrons. So... Uh, if you've got some thoughts of questions you'd like us to answer during the show, we're going to do an end of year question Q and a extravaganza. So drop them down in the comments so we can get them. Now, uh, don't put them in the chat. Now, if you're watching live, I won't go back to the chat. You will have to put it in the comment, but as always, Hey, if you liked this, give it a like subscribe, uh, for, for all sorts of fun, new, new stuff. We'll be here every week as always. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can do so through the Patreon link down below. Uh, that Patreon is focused on hobby and review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, there's still the merch store, and there is 10 more days to get your vote in for Team Tom or Team Tyler, so don't forget about that. Uh, 
Tyler has his little character, Robert. He's the he's he's got uh, he has a tiny little Sylvaneth dude. He show he when, whenever it's a Tyler show, I use the Tyler uh, sprite, but he has his. Uh, and so we appreciate all the support uh, very very much. Uh, but as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drop those questions. We'll see you next.